Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Blue Sync on Thursday, June 6, 2024. We have quite the exciting topic to cover today. We're very happy to announce that we will be launching Darwin Cloud to our agent base and also our managers as well. If you've been in transaction plan, I don't know, maybe over the last six months, you've noticed it's very glitchy. There's lots of issues, particularly when it comes to running reports, and they're not fixing it because they're moving over to Darwin Cloud. So we are very excited to be able to start training for our agents to be able to utilize cloud. Now, it's not going to be the Darwin cloud that you see as ASCs and RSCs. It's going to be a truncated um, service for them so that they're not tripping over buttons that they don't have access to. It'll be very streamlined. And Jessica Boblinski will join us here in just a few minutes to show you what that screen looks like. But before that, let me show you a few documents um, that can help us all with this transition. So if you jump over to your ASC procedures, Google Drive, and again, if you're newer with us or you're not sure what I'm talking about when I say your ASC procedures drive, don't hesitate to reach out to your RSC or to myself. Um, so right here in the Darwin Cloud folder within the ASC procedures, there's two new documents, thanks to Jessica. There's the Darwin Cloud login instructions for agents, and there's the Darwin login Cloud login instructions for managers. Currently, as it stands, Darwin Cloud is not going to request a two-factor authentication for agents. So their login procedure is slightly different. Now, their username and their password will be the same as it's been for transaction plan. If they don't know what that is and you guys aren't quite sure how to help them, just reach out to your RSCs or your onboarders in your regions, and they can help get their security um, updated with their username and password. But again, agents do not have two-factor currently. Uh, managers will have two-factor. And so that's why there's two different login um, how-to guides. Also wanted to point out, we have updated our technology tools flyer for the agents. If you um, go back to your ASC procedure drive, go into help, and you'll see right here, thanks to CJ and marketing, our technology tools flyer has been updated. So it's going to look quite similar. A lot of it hasn't changed, but as you scroll down, a few changes here include we replaced transaction plan with Darwin Cloud. And we've also updated the information for Cole information. It used to be called Cold Realty Resource. We used to all have a single sign-on link. It's a little bit different now. They rebranded it as Cole Information. And if your agents head over to Schmidt Resources to the Cole Information Square, it'll notify them to reach out to get their username and password. So the service is still there. It's just treated just a little bit differently, kind of like what Darwin Cloud's doing. So agreed, it's a much better product. The agents are going to find it a lot more useful than what they've been able to do with transaction plan. So one more thing to notate, and then I'll give it over to Jessica. In Schmidt Resources, if you pick whatever region you're sitting in, um, I'm in Ohio, so I'll pick Ohio, and you go to the Technology Square right there in the upper right, when you scroll down to the Account Tech Square, you'll see it's been updated. It used to say Transaction Plan, it now says Darwin Cloud slash Account Tech. When you click on that, you'll now see that there is the login for Darwin Cloud. Again, this works for you guys, same way it would work for your agents. Just your agents will have a little bit different access um, compared to what you guys have. Now, if you're an ASC and RSC that's processing, the Citrix uh, environment is still out there. We tend to want to use the cloud. It's much easier. I think everybody would agree it's much easier to access than the Citrix environment. There's still a few things they haven't quite figured out yet when it comes to cloud. So once in a great while, you still have to log into Citrix, but for the most part, we should all be completely operating in cloud and your agents will be able to do so as well. So Jessica, are you on the call with us? I am. Great, let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen and I will let you take control. Thank you, let me just get it pulled up. Absolutely. Can you see my screen? We can. And it's cloud? It is. Perfect. So like Carrie said, um, same username and login for our same login instruction or username and password the agents will use that they use for transaction plan. For us, Darwin Cloud looks very similar to the Citrix version, but for agents, this is going to be a much different look for them compared to transaction plan because they were never in Citrix. So they may need a little bit more assistance in navigating um, around and trying to find what they're looking for. 
but it does offer a few more things that that transaction plan didn't offer. Um, so this is what it's going to look like. Like Carrie said, they don't have two-factor authentication. They just need their username and password. And then it'll bring them to this dashboard screen. Um, I'm going to click off of there real quick. Um, that does give them some analytics on how they're doing their, their GCI um, volume, anything like that that has to do with their commission plan and closings and listings. So there's some good information on that screen. Um, but what I want to show here is, is this properties of people and their reports, because that's what I think they're going to use the most. Um, in Darwin Cloud, they do have the ability to um, to view their properties and do some photo swapping if they want. They did have that the ability to do that in transaction plan, um, so they they still can do it here. This does have open houses. Um, I've never used the showing one, but that is an option there. Uh, they will need to search first, though. If they just click the search button, it should pull up all their properties. It's only going to give them access to what they have. Um, and you can see I'm using Kevin Perkins. So here he's the listing agent, and here he's the selling agent. So I'm going to click on one of these. He's a listing. Let's that one's closed too. So I did do all. So if they only want their actives, they can click the drop down and I can just do active. Let's do that. And we have one here. So I'm going to click on this one. And then if you go to media stream, this is where he's going to find all of his photos. So if I wanted to um, swap these out for the professional photos and the high res photos, um, that they can do that right there from the media stream. The ASCs can still do it, but this just gives the um, option to the agents as well. Um, then there is this open house. They can add one there if they would like. And showing I've never used, but maybe they might find a purpose for that. Um, we do use showing time, so I'm not sure if this would be relevant, but hey, they can they can check it out if they'd like. Yeah, we go back to the basics tab real quick. Yes. So you'll see that most everything else is grayed out. They cannot change that, which we all know is important because it can screw up the feed to Dash and to all the other website syndications. So they can view it, they just can't update it. But they, you can see to the left there where the showing open house and media is in white, everything else is grayed out just like it is on the basics tab. That allows them the functionality that Jessica just showed without allowing them to um, change any of those other fields. Correct. Yeah, there is some stuff that they can't change. And you'll see that, like like you just said, when it's great. So like these tabs right here, they won't be able to do anything with either. They really just kind of have um, what transaction plan did for them in this one, which was the media and the open houses. Most of this, um, oh, well, technically all of this would feed from the MLS and we don't want to change any of that info. Um, their pendings would be added if they don't, if we don't have a pending feed. So it would be up to the ASCs to get that in. Um, but once it is, then they would have the ability to, to view it and do the, what they need to. Great. And then we did have a quick question um, from okay. Sarah. Where does the open house feed to? So yes, you're correct. It will go over to the cobalbanker.com websites, but it will also go to every other syndication that the brand offers us. So it should come direct from the MLS. Um, sometimes we all know technology doesn't always work. So if you are trying to expedite getting an open house over to those websites, if you put it into account tech, that does feed Dash, which then feeds cobalbanker.com, um, cobalbankerluxury.com, and all of the syndication therein. And Stephanie asked um, if we can remind them how to reset their password, Jessica. So at the end, we can jump into um, Yeah. Yeah, we can do that. and show that. And Sarah, I, I'll go ahead and try to find an example while Jessica continues and where that, well, how that open house looks. So give me a second here while Jessica continues on and we'll hit that question back in a minute. Um, is it for the agents to reset their password or for us to reset theirs? Us to reset it for the agents. Okay. okay. The agents will have the ability to do it. Um, there is a password reset option in Darwin Cloud. So they it, if they don't know their username, that's not going to be helpful, but um, they can do that. So that is a big win for us too. Um, that helps them get it a little bit quicker so they don't have to outsource it to somebody. But um, I will show you in just a second um, how to do it for agents. So that's kind of the gist of the, the properties tab. And they um, 
And they also can access the people tab. And in this case, I did already search for his name, but he would need to do it again. Um, they would need to initially do it. And then you do see that he was in here as a buyer and um, an agent. You always want to make sure you're picking the agent profile, but if they've ever purchased anything for their personal, um, they would be in there as well. But just make sure they're picking the, the buyer or the agent profile. So this is where they have a bit more um, opportunity to do things themselves um, and add things to their, their websites that we didn't have in transaction plans. So I think this is a pretty cool, um, I'm pretty excited about going to Darwin Cloud for the agents. Um, if you click on web profile, they can add in their own bios, they can update their, their, their profiles, they can add these specialties, a welcome message, um, anything like that. They just need would click on the, oh, I don't have to look at that. Um, but they can, I should be able to go in and edit. I may need to look at that, Carrie, because I do see that the plus is grayed out. Okay. Um, can you double click on it or no? I can't. It's not coming out. All right, we'll have to take a look at that part. Yeah. They will be able to do this, though. They'll be able to access their web um, profiles. Um, remind me again, if it goes to Moxie, they have to be in a personal profile for it to go to Moxie? Yes. So any of the other tabs will go over to cobalbanker.com and cobalbankerluxury.com. But in order to uh, populate their Moxie bio, it has to be under the personal profile, which you'll see is number one right there. Yep. So this would be the one, um, but they do have these options to add like a welcome message, specialties, anything like that. They also have the ability to update their headshot. Um, instead of doing it in transaction plan, we do it in Darwin Cloud now. Um, and then this would submit to Dash and this is what would go to the websites. So if they wanted to swap out their photo, they can do that as well. We can still do it for them, but they just have the ability to do it as they please. And then the last function I wanted to show you would be this reports. They will see all of these reports um, due to the different companies and different regions we have. Um, they can find their, their reports they like, and then they can add them to favorites. And then they can just click favorites over here. Um, what the reports will have will be their agent invoice statements. So if they wanna figure out what their bill is or what they've paid, um, they can run that statement. That one's right here. So I could add that to my favorites. Um, the other one that would be um, a good one would be their 1099 at the end of the end of the year. Um, that would be another one we get a lot of questions on and get asked to run. There's closings by agent. There's company dollar. There's a, quite a few reports if they ever wanted to see um, where they stand on their commission plan, or if they wanted to run a listing report just to see what listings they have. Um, so all of those reports are in here and they would just, they can either click them from the all reports, they can add them to their favorites if they don't want to see all the ones. Um, that just makes it a little bit more simple and easier to find. And then they can just run their, they just double click it and run it just like transaction plan. This part's the same. You do need to pick, uh, fill in the date parameters but um, that part is, this is very similar to transaction plan. So if they've ever ran one there, then they will, um, they should know how to do it here. Yeah, and this is also where your managers will be able to go to run reports for their offices. And one of the features I love so much about cloud that transaction plan didn't have, if Jessica, if you don't mind closing that screen, mm -hmm. it's that top of the page where it says run last launched report. It's so nice. You don't have to go in and reselect your parameters every single time. If you wanna run year to date and you wanna jump back in and run last year, you click that button, it pulls up everything you just ran, and you can tweak it from there. It's a huge time save. For sure. Um, I do use that function a lot. <laughs> or if you want, like you said, different time frames, or if it's not right, or if you forgot to add a field. Um, some of the reports do give you the options on what data to, uh, to print. So sometimes you can pick that. Um, but I do suggest like having a, a sales meeting and kind of going in and just letting them play around in there, get in there, um, see what they can do with it and um, and just be there for any questions they have. 
because they probably will. This is going to be a bit different for them um, from transaction plan, but we've, we're familiar with it because we've been in it for a while now. I don't even know how long it's been. Yeah. And Tom asked a really good question. They can uh -huh. view the reports like P&Ls, but they can't run them. If they try to run them, they're just going to get blank reports. They're, it's not going to have any data. Unfortunately, right now we can't take away the reports that they can't run. We'd love that functionality. Uh, we're not there yet with account tech, but that's a great question, Tom, but they will not be able to view that information. Managers with your manager security would be able to run the information that you typically would have ran on a transaction plan you're going to have the same functionality in Darwin Cloud, just much better. Yeah, you'll only get the office or the offices you have access to. So even if you ran it for the whole company, you would just get what what you're designated to in the security tab. Yep. Great. Well, Jessica, if you want to go ahead and stop sharing, I will share real quick. Um, Do you want me to show password really quick? I actually have it up. So I'm oh, gonna... good. Okay. Because yeah. I'm not, yeah, I'll stop sharing. Sacred because you're in your other access. Yeah, I'd have to jump to the other one. Oops. Okay. So we are now in Darwin Cloud that you guys are used to seeing, right? For the ASCs and the RSCs, you have all the options at the top that the agents don't have. In order to help an agent with their password, and we're super excited to be able to have them have their own password reset, that's fantastic. You wanna go right here into the security tab. Search, always search, don't just add. Always, always search for your agents, just like anything else, title, mortgage, anytime you are talking about people, always search first. And then when you have their information up, click change password. This is how you can change the password for them. You'll see that the username comes up here. It's attached to the person file. And then again, you can change the password. If you're not familiar with this because you're not onboarding agents, don't hesitate to reach out to your RSCs and your onboarders, and they'll be able to help with that as well. Uh, Brenda, I'll hit that here in a recap real quick. Um, the question was, how do they get into there? And I'll show that again in a minute. So to answer Sarah's question about the open houses, I'm going to flip over to coldwellbanker.com real quick. So you'll see that I just simply searched for Traverse City here. Anything that has an open house, which will feed from Darwin Cloud, and I'll give it some time, right? It's not going to be instant. Usually tell the agents overnight. You'll see, and maybe you can't see because it's light, but there's an open Thursday 4 to 6 banner right on this listing. Plus, the consumers have the ability to filter by clicking all filters. They can actually look just for open houses if they so choose. So anything with a virtual tour or an open house will come up. And then when you click on the listing itself and you scroll down a little bit to learn more about the house, you'll see the open house information is here. It has the new functionality. The consumer can add it right to their calendar if they so choose right from the click of the button there. So that's where the open houses filter out. So that was a great question. Please don't click the bulk password change, Tom. We just want to do it individually for each individual agent. Um, we could tend to have issues if we do the bulk password. So please just do the individual password change or encourage the agents to update their own password now that they do have the password reset button uh, right here. So great question. So back to um, Brenda's question, if an agent does want to log in, the best way they can do it is to go to Schmidt Resources. And we'll back out a screen here. Schmidt Resources, their region, technology. The account tech, newly updated to read Darwin Cloud link here. And then the Darwin Cloud login button is there. Again, username and password, they have to know their username in order to reset their password. So forgot password is a new option. Transaction plan didn't have that. Or like we just showed you in your uh, Darwin Cloud, you're able to update passwords for them as well. But again, don't hesitate to reach out to your RSCs or your agent onboarders for help with that. Anything I missed, Jessica? No, I think you covered it. The only thing I can recommend is for ASCs is to use those um, job aids in the ASC procedure drive. And, and, you know, send those out to your agents. Um, this will go out Monday? Yes. So the email will go out Monday, but we know agents are busy. They get a lot of emails. Um, they may miss it. So I would send this out. This has the link on it. It tells them exactly what to do. I, told, I tell them to um, save it as their favorites. 
then they don't need to find it. That's something I use often. Um, but it just kind of covers what they can get into and what they can find. So I would send this to all the agents in your office as kind of an announcement um, after the Monday one, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I um, also encourage, you know, print this out after the email goes out, put it in your agent's boxes if you would like, uh, post it in, you know, where you have your agent communication posted. It's a great place to communicate that out so that they're aware they have this functionality. Uh, the question real quick was back to that technology tools flyer. It's actually in a few places. Um, it's in dot loop in the new agent loop for Michigan. It is here in the ASC procedures folder under the help folder. You'll see right here, it's the technology tools flyer. You also can get to it from your ASC square on Schmidt resources. Get Schmidt done you'll see that it's here as well. So we try to put it in different places so that people can find it, but for an ASC, either your ASC square or in that ASC procedure drive under the help folder, you'll find it there as well. It's a great document, particularly with a new agent, particularly with an agent that maybe is six to 12 months in because they got this when they first onboarded, but who's gonna remember, you know, they're drinking from a fire hose. So always good to get back out to them. It gives them the information they need for our technology tools. Plus it allows them to have that spot where they can put in their username and password. And yes, Sarah, it is in dot loop. Jessica's actually adding the new one with their new information on Darwin cloud into dot loop uh, now for our new agent folder. Great questions. I love all of this. Any last thoughts, Jessica? No, I don't. Um, but if they do have any questions or if you want me to join um, your sales meetings or anything like that, I can jump. I can come in and do like a 10 minute kind of like what we did here um, and go over it and answer any questions. Or if you have any questions or issues logging in, just you can reach out to your ASCs, your RSCs or or myself. Great. And then the last question was, um, when can they, they can access this now. This is up for them. If they'd like to log in today, they can, they don't have to wait till Monday. Again, if they've been using transaction plan, they can switch over seamlessly with their same username and password. It's up, it's live, it's ready to go. That works for your agents as long, along with your managers as well. So great question. Well, I appreciate your time this morning. As always, you can't break it. So get in there, start playing around with it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you so much, Jessica, for showing us. And um, take a look at your ASC procedure drive. Take a look at Schmidt Resources. And let us know if you have any questions after the fact. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye now.